It's good to be with you. Today I was adopted into the African tribes. I got to eat the famous fat cakes. Very good. I think we're cousins. This evening, I want you to pay especially a close attention to what I want to say tonight. Last night, yesterday evening, I preached on a personal God. And tonight, I want to preach on our ability to claim God's promises on a personal level. I will tell you that I live more like you than you would ever imagine. And there has to be something in us that reaches way beyond our natural ability in light of our circumstances and our geographic location that actually lays hold on a personal level the promises of a personal God. The text that I have chosen tonight is Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. And then also I want to read out of Romans 10, 12 and 13. There's got to be something in every one of us. I call it the spirit of fight. The man that stands before you today, I've had to contend. I've had to fight. I've had to believe God at a personal level for every area of my life. The word contend is what I want to focus on tonight because this is an attitude or a spirit that engages their personal life with the intent to win. Every individual here today, you've got to want to win. In spite of every circumstance of life, you've got to want to win. This is what the word contend means. It is a deep-rooted attitude. It is a passion. It is a desire to achieve and to accomplish. I want to begin this sermon that I've called for all men, an expected end. I want to remind every one of you, we serve a living God. This can never be forgotten. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11 through 14, lays before us this powerful declaration. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end, to give you an amazing end, to give you a powerful end. You shall call upon me, you shall pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Listen to this, verse 13. You shall seek me. And find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. What an amazing promise this evening. God's plan for our life is found in this passage. It speaks of a supernatural influence. The promise of peace and not of evil to give us an amazing and an expected end to influence our personal lives, our families, and to change the course of an entire nation. An expected end. I want to read Romans 10, 12 and 13 because it's going to lay before us another promise that I guarantee you tonight we must embrace as a people represented here tonight. Romans 10 and 12 says, there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. 
the American and the African, the Indian and the Chinese. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For it is the same Lord over all and is rich and is rich and is rich unto all those that call upon his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Psalms 124, verse 8, Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. These scriptures compiled this evening point to you and I the amazing promises of God. Throughout the entire word of God, there's no mistaking this supernatural dimension. And tonight, God is willing to respond. He is willing to touch us. He is willing to visit us in every part of our life. It is to release God's ultimate plan in your life. And what an amazing statement is being made in this passage of Scripture the promise of an expected end and God's ability to respond to all those that will call upon his name. The promises were never meant to be thrown aside. The promises of God were never to be viewed in a cultural mindset. There are no restrictions tonight. He is rich unto all that call upon his name. This lesson had to be deeply embraced by the American Indians. This lesson had to be embraced by this pastor here today. I had to come to the real reality that if God can help Pastor Greg, God can help Pastor Aragon, if God can help Pastor Mitchell, God can help Pastor Heinberg, he is rich unto all. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, and it is possibly one of the greatest lessons to be embraced by any individual on a personal level. Our help comes from the very God who made the heavens and the earth. And this text is filled with an expected end and unbelievable promises. I declare to you this evening, the desire of God and the will of God is for every one of us on a personal, individual level to experience this supernatural dimension of God's ability to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. There are no restrictions tonight. You missed a fine place to say amen. The text is reminding us of the promises of God. I so love these two scriptures together because they're available to all, all those that call upon his name. It is speaking of the promises of God, nothing more important. This subject must be contended for. This subject must be desired by every individual. God has to move on my behalf. God must respond to my voice. I can remember years ago when I was in the Gallup church, a girl came to my house and she had a demon. And she was speaking with a man's voice. Well, you can't have her. She's mine. And I mean, I was scared out of my mind. If you've never seen a real devil, I'll guarantee you that'll get you saved right now. <laughs> and anyway, I called my pastor. Listen to me. And he says, I'm not going to your house to help you. <laughs> you deal with it. And here's a girl I'm chasing around my head. She's like an animal. And I can remember praying. I said, you know what, God? I have to experience your power for myself. And I was able to see an unbelievable deliverance. 
And I begin to understand that God wants me to contend for this personal, supernatural dimension. It must be experienced on an individual level. Nothing pleases God tonight more than actually putting his promises into circulation. Listen to me. God loves it when his children and his church and his men experience his salvation and the amazing promises of God. This is what will cause us to rise up is when we experience this supernatural dimension of a God who is rich unto all. I'm going to talk to you firstly about no restrictions. The thoughts that God has towards his people. Our text is speaking to all men, to all people, in spite of a language barrier, or a skin color, or a geographic location. This must be understood. The text says there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. All are welcomed and equally accessible to the salvation of the Lord God, what he has provided for us on a personal scale. It is a supernatural promise. In this text, it says the Jews have no exclusive privilege and fr from the Greek is not rejected. There is no difference in the eyes of God. Salvation is purpose for all. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for all. It is the same Lord who governs. It is the same Lord that we all serve. And Romans tells us that he is rich in mercy to all those that call upon his name. We read this again in Romans 1 and 16 where Paul is addressing this subject again. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. Here it is. To everyone, to everyone, to everyone. There are no restrictions tonight except an attitude and a heart and a passion and a desire to contend for a supernatural dimension in our own life to actually believe God and call upon his name. God wants to bless us. God wants to show himself amazing, unbelievable, supernatural. I am not, as he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. There's no restrictions, my friends. In Isaiah 28 and 16 says, Therefore says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tired stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and he that will believe shall not make haste. It is speaking, beloved, of no restrictions available to all that call upon his name. There is no difference or advantage which the Jews had over the Greek in regards to all the promises that we read. Equally welcome to experience this salvation. Colossians 2 and 15, listen, having spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in all things. This is a gospel of power, supernatural dominion, no restrictions available to all men, a personal application, a personal desire, a personal want to achieve and to accomplish. This drove me in the early days of my ministry. When I moved to the Navajo American Indians, they spoke a different language. They lived a different life. I was totally 
foreign to everything that was there. I needed, there was nothing that I could say that would tip the scales. I needed God. Maybe it was a stubborn spirit that I didn't want to fail or I never wanted to go back or whatever. But there's something that laid hold of me as I begin to contend and believe, God, I know you are able to help me. I know that you are able to move for me. I know you have an expected end for me. And that drove me. I was able to experience and see firsthand the very thing that drove my headship, that drove my pastors, that drove our fellowship, a supernatural God with no restrictions moving upon our behalf, looking for a man that would contend for the promises of God. I want to talk to you secondly about the power of God that's rich unto all. In this passage of Scripture, it is making for you and I a clear declaration. It is basically telling us God wants to help us and I got news for you. He wants to help us now. God wants to move on our behalf. This term rich unto all is speaking of God's desire and God's willingness. In Luke chapter 9 verses 1 and 2, then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils, the power to cure all diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Listen to me, we are a part of a supernatural agenda. We are a part of a supernatural relationship. We are not alone. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And he is looking for individual people People who recognize the power of our text, you shall call upon his name and he will hearken unto you. He will be found by you. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever will lift up their voice, who will ever, whosoever will contend, God, you must move on my behalf. Man, them fat cakes got me fired up. I'm going to eat three of them tomorrow. Man, I felt guilty, you know. Pastor Heimberg comes out with this bag of hot fat cakes, and I politely eat one. And I thought, dang, how can I get another one without, without sounding like an American, you know? And finally, Kate heard from the Lord. Pastor, would you like another one? Yes! And all I could say, I was sorry, Pastor was driving all the traffic blinkers. I was like, anyway. Rich unto all. I think this is so important to me because of how I live on, with the Navajo people knowing that I don't have the power to help these people beyond my own human means. When I begin to realize there's a God that loves us and a God that is rich in mercy. He's given us the power. Look at that text. A supernatural dimension. The word rich in its simplest term means to have abundance or to have what we need. We cannot turn the local church into a reform. We cannot do that. It is not a welfare department. Listen to me, beloved. We serve a God that is rich and able and able and able to give us more than we need. It means rich unto all. To have some stored up is what the word means. For all that is needed, all that is present, and all that is needed for our personal use. 
is a picture of a common father, not only to the Jews, but entrance into this promise. So we, we exercise the right to call on his name. When you and I as personal individuals will ask, do you realize that we really do get from God what we ask for? And this has to be grasped. There are no restrictions tonight. God's not looking down as well. You're not so and so, so I can't help you very much. But that brother, I can help over there, and I'm going to help that church over there more. And it's just not like that. It says He's rich unto all. There is plenty and able to supply as a common father will do anything for his children. How much more our heavenly father. He is rich in mercy. He is rich in grace. He is rich unto all those. We'll contend for this personal passion, dispensing favor Mercy upon all that call on his name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But as it is written, listen to me, I has not seen, neither is ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Listen to me. I stand here today, I'm in total amazement, total awe, total, I, I'm, I'm, my mind can't embrace it. The life I'm living today is more than I could see, is more than I could think, it's more than I could pray for, more than I could imagine. This is the expected end that is found in our text. As we sit here today, we are not even humanly capable to fully grasp all that God wants to do in our lives. Listen to me. This is what it means to be rich unto all the things that God has prepared for them that love him. There's one common denominator. I choose to love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of my heart and all of my mind and all of my strength because he is rich unto all. In Ephesians 3 and 20 it says, now unto him. See, tonight at this altar call, we're going to be looking unto him, unto him who is able to do exceedingly more, abundantly and above all, what we could even ask or think, not according to our ability, but according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and forever. This is commonly applied to wealth, but it is speaking and being applied to God. And it's the means by which he wants every one of us to abound in mercy and grace and all that is needed to survive and move our lives forward. Ephesians 2 and 4 says rich in mercy. This word actually translates into activity, into compassion. As I stand here tonight, the God of heaven is desiring and actively at work in our personal lives with absolutely this undivided focus upon our life leaving before us one instruction and that only instruction is to call upon his name to approach him in sincerity and honesty his things have to come to a point in our life where some things are no longer acceptable can you say amen, amen. 
there have been some things in my ministry and in my personal life, they were no longer acceptable. And I begin to contend. I begin to fight in my spirit. I begin to go before God and say, you know what, God, if there are no restrictions, I need you to respond to my voice. I need you to hear me. I need to be found by you. I need you to move on my behalf. There are no restrictions. You know what, God? You don't even know. You know, you know what? Just more than you could ask or think. Looking unto him who's able to do exceedingly more abundantly and above all what we could ask or think. In Hebrews 4, 16, becomes even more intense. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? Do you recognize this could change your life forever? You see the invitation again. The lack here is not God's promise. The lack here isn't an invisible God. The lack here is human understanding. As we see in Hebrews 4 and 16, it tells us how to approach his throne. It tells us the attitude that must accompany our approach. If we are not careful, we will religiously approach the symbolic throne of God because this is how we were taught and this is what we've seen. But oh, beloved, when there's a heart and an attitude of the individual, male or female, young or old. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain, that we may receive, that we may receive from God. Isn't it strange to think that tonight God wants to give you something? Isn't it amazing to think that God wants to visit us tonight totally dependent on our ability to lift our voice and to call on his name and to tell him what we need? Oh, beloved, it says that we would come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us, to help us in the time of need. As we sit here today, there's people here, your need is tonight. You need, you need, a, you need a move of God tonight. You need a supernatural deposit tonight. More than a sermon can give you. More than a reservation pastor can preach. More than our precious pastor Heinberg can do for us. God who is rich unto all. Can we approach the throne with a heart of contending? I used to pray and say, you know what, God? I got to have you help me. I'm only looking unto you. I began to understand that he was rich in mercy. And how I approach his throne is so critical. In 2 Chronicles 30 and 9 it says, And if you turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they shall come again into his land. And the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you. God will not turn his face away from us if you'll return to him. Rich in mercy. I'm going to close tonight. Those that will make the call. There really have been times in my life where I had to make the call. There were three distinguishable times that I want to share with you. Obviously, when I was launched to the 
American Indians. And I realized what I got my life into. You won't believe this, but I live more like you can imagine. I went into the township today. I live closer to that than I do what you would interpret as America. When I moved there, I recognize that my only survival is the promise of God's expected end for my life. Do you know that God did not save us just to clean us up? God save us with an intended purpose, with a glorious expected end, with the right of access, and we read it everywhere. You will search for me and you will find me and I will be found by you. Listen to me, that's speaking in a very personal language. God wants us to make the call. I made the call again. My marriage was just a terrible thing. And I remember saying, you know what? I didn't want to go to counseling anymore. My wife and I just needed to touch God. And one day we answered an altar call. And we called upon the name of the Lord. Not ashamed of the gospel, but lifted up our voice said, God, you have to touch us in the time of our... We boldly approached the throne. And God met us there. I've been married 44 years to the same woman. When I lost my 18-year-old son, there is no pain that I've ever experienced that intense. Last night at dinner, there was a number of boys there and they were asking me all kinds of questions. And even, it's been 20 years, I pulled out his final picture and I could still feel the intensity of that moment. But I stand here tonight not from discipline. I stand here tonight because in the most difficult time of my life, I had to contend for something beyond the natural. And I called upon his name, and God met me there. Today, I can look at families that have lost children. Now, I'm a real friendly guy. I love people, can you tell? <laughs> And in spite of what Shannon says, I might have shaken your hands a hundred times. That's only because I'm happy to see you. But I want to tell you something. I'm able to tell with great authority to every family I meet, you're going to be happy again, I promise. I say, look at me. I always sing a little dance, look who's back, back again, tell a friend, look who's back. So I can rap, you guys, I can rap. <laughs> Rich unto all. As so we get ready to pray, because tonight I'm not going to let you be religious. Tonight God's going to give us what we ask for. And the only thing you have to do, and the problem is we're not good at that. You're going to have to call on his name. You're going to have to make the call unashamedly. He's going to have to be like blind Bartimaeus. We might tell you, shut up, we don't do that around here. We don't do that. You just need to keep on screaming, Lord, I come calling on your day. Forget the Lord right here. Is we're contending for a supernatural dimension found in our text. It's an attitude of heart. It's a contending for what God has for us. 
for what God wants for us. In Romans 10, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you do any study at all, and I've used this verse a hundred times on sinners, but when you give it any attention at all, you will find out that it means to supplicate. That word supplicate is actually a financial term, which means you're going to spend. I'm going to spend right here. And I'm going to exercise my right as a child of God. I'm going to exercise my right knowing there are no restrictions. And I'm going to invoke in prayer the promise found in this text. And there's no way to separate the spirit of contending. You know, I, I got to tell you, can I share with you something kind of Anyway, when I got here, you know, I didn't know what to expect my first time here. But I was so happy to see many of you are short like me. <laughs> it would have been a bad day if all of you Africans were real tall. See, Pastor Heinberg and I, we got, it, we, got it, we, we got this figured out. If you're real big, we'll just cut you in half and beat you twice. <laughs> I was so happy when there was a lot of people short like me. When you're short, even growing up, you have to contend. I grew up with big, white, corn-eating white guys. Oh, man. They always wanted to beat up the little guy, so there's no victory in whipping a little guy. If you beat me up, everybody's going to be mad at you. And if I whip you as big as you are, everybody's going to mock you. You ought to just leave me alone. <laughs> but tonight, as we wind this up, there has to be in something in us as individuals. And to think that the will of God could hinge solely on what we want for our life. Not on the program that we're a part of or this wonderful ministry or the vision of our fellowship. This personal application is a contending in our own heart and our own soul. It's an expression of the heart. It's an attitude that we must bring to the throne one of dependency and faith. God's going to help me. And he's going to help me now. It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This word means delivered, made whole, relieved from destruction. It means sozo, God's life. And it's repeated 54 times in the gospel. And it's the God of heaven is bound to a commitment tonight to respond to all those who will make the call. Can I ask you a personal question? What do you want God to do for you? In sincerity and in honesty. If what I'm preaching is true and I know it to be so, what do you want God to do? Because now it's based on the supernatural promise. And the only thing he's asking from us is for us to lift our voice and to make the call. This is not a casual altar call tonight. How many folks know we all have cell phones? How, how many folks know if you call somebody and you don't say nothing? What does the person on the other end do? They hang up. Who are you, psycho click? 
how many times in the hour of our need have we lacked in making a clear call to the God who is able to do for us exceedingly more, abundantly and above all, what we could ask or think. If you will lift your voice at this altar, God is going to be faithful to be found by you. I want you to bow your heads tonight. As I prayed for these meetings, I couldn't get away from the reality of some of the personal things that I've had to fight through in my own life and ministry. Some of the things that I had to contend for. Because it's very easy to think that God only helps some people. That there's a special access to God that we don't know about. But to contend. Tonight I believe there's people who need a miracle. You need a supernatural breakthrough in your life. You need to be found by God to fuel this expected end. Maybe you're here tonight, you're not a Christian, you're not born again, you're not right with God. Pastor Artie, I came tonight, I'm not a Christian, I'm backslid very quickly. I, I want to get right with God, Pastor Artie. Pray for me, here's my hand. Anyone here tonight, I, want to, I need prayer. I'm just not right with God. Last and final call. I see that hand. Anybody else? Quickly. Anyone else? Lift up your hand so I can see it. I might have missed you. I see that one honest heart. Brother, you raised your hand. I want you to make your way to the altar very quickly. Just come and kneel right here. Someone's going to be here to pray for you in just a moment. I want the church to stand with me. I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord. For you, says the Lord, I have thoughts of peace, of victory. For you, of dominion, recovery and healing. Not of evil. I have for you an expected end. If you'll call on me, I will answer you. If you search for me and contend for this with all your heart, you'll be found by me. There's no difference. That is the most humbling thing I've said tonight. There's no difference. Rich unto all. Can you call on his name? Tonight again, I'm going to challenge you. When we respond to this altar, we have to be prepared with an attitude of contending. Tonight, with an audible voice, I am going to call upon his name. And I'm going to contend with a desire to win and to experience this personal, supernatural focus that God has on me. This will change your life. You need a touch of God. You need a miracle. You need to experience God's power. I want you to come and just stand at this altar. We're going to say a mass prayer. I need God to help me. I just want you to stand. I, I don't want you to know. I want you to stand. Get up here a little closer, guys. I 
want you to lift your voice with everything in you. God wants me to encourage you. you when I set eyes on you, God just wanted me to tell you that he's going to help you. He wants me to encourage you. He hears you. You must contend. You must push back against all that you're fighting. Because God's hand is going to visit you and help you. And you're going to experience a supernatural dimension. And the Spirit of God wanted me to encourage you not, not to get discouraged right here. And to just believe him for all that he wants to do. It was an altar like this that changed my life. Healed my heart. Healed my marriage. Healed my broken heart. And I was able to recognize the personal God that we serve. And it's all triggered by our ability to call upon him. What do you need God to do? Are you willing to speak that out? Because he's rich unto all that will call on his name. I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And then with everything in you, I want you to lift your hands. And I want you to call upon the name of the Lord. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I recognize, I recognize the, expected the expected end that you have for my life. For my life. Tonight, I want to experience you. Tonight, I I'm going to call on your name. I want you to touch my life. I want to be found by you. Tonight, I will contend. I want what you have for me. I know you're rich in mercy to all those that will call. Tonight I will make the call. Tonight I want you to listen. Pour out of your spirit upon my behalf. I ask this in Jesus' name. I want you to begin to lift your voice and call upon his name. Anytime you're ready. God, touch these people. Come on, church. Lift your voice. Make the call. Call on His name. God, pour out of your spirit of this place. God, touch these people. God, touch my brother. 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 Call on His name. God touch him, my Korabasi and Robosi at Tarabasi. It Arabasi and Robosi and Darabasi. It Arabasi and Robosi and Darabasi. Let's give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Go ahead, crank it up. Give the Lord a clap offering. God touch these precious folks. God visit these precious people. God move upon their behalf. Worship Him tonight. Worship Him tonight. Rich unto all. Worship Him tonight. A personal encounter. I want you to sing it out with our let brother. The weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. For Lift your voice, we're gonna worship one more time, then I'm gonna turn the service over. Sing it out. With a grateful heart, give thanks to Shannon, the Lord. Shannon, if you get ready to come, give thanks because it's given Jesus come Christ. Come on, church, bless him. Bless him. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy Because it's given 
Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord one more clap offering tonight.